Hey boys, welcome to Amass Games. My name is Simon and today I'm going to show you how to set up, play and review the game Kyoto. Now this is a game for three to five players. It's a bidding negotiation game whereby you're lobbyists and you're trying to ultimately uh, kind of let the world survive. You know, the globe, the economy, the, well, the economy is another point, but trying to let the, the animals maybe survive. Maybe you're trying to let uh, air pollution be, you know, at reasonable levels and maybe you're trying to let the environment just not get too warm because as much as people say oh it's there's no global warming there's no climate change it's not uh, cold outside well it might not be where you are but of course globally it is increasing and there's many many negative effects so you have various points in this game and i'm going to go through them all now now you've always a bit of setup if you haven't seen it already uh, please check out my overview video I tend to do overview uh, overview videos to tell you a bit more about the game you're going to punch this piece out you don't need it anymore it's left at the box you can construct this box if you recall from that other video so just whilst i've grabbed this out please hit that like button show me that you're enjoying the content hit the subscribe button show me that uh yeah you're keen to see more stuff and then a the notification bell of course as well and also check out the comments and descriptions. I do reply quickly to comments and hopefully don't make any goofs. So this lovely lectern, you're gonna take an equal amount of turns basically pitching and trying to say what you want doing with the world. And you're gonna have some secret objectives, which I'll talk about in a moment. So again, it's three to five players, which uh, of course means if you're a two, you could actually play like that, but with negotiation, it's gonna be a bit harder. There are six different countries. EU, for this sake, we're just gonna call one country. And in this instance, you're just gonna pick one. That makes no difference whatsoever, just who do you fancy being? So I happen to be playing as Australia, when I played most recently. So I happened to get one of those things, put these two things together, you slot these things in. I was gonna do it on a separate video perhaps, even on this one, and you're gonna slide it in. And it's just gonna go in front of you and basically turned away so you can read the back, which I'll talk about in due course. So you're gonna, whoever amount you're playing with, just track the rest back in the box. And we have an EU candidate over here, which we'll leave just about in shot maybe. We have China and we have, let's say, the USA, United States of America. Again, it doesn't make any difference. I know from memory that I think uh, Australia has the, more, the most carbon emissions per person in any other country by more than double. Then it's the USA and then uh, everywhere else is pretty much a lot further behind that. So you're going to lay out those cards. You're then going to chuck out everything else in the box. Everything is pretty much loose. You could stick it in the uh, little container which you do create for cards, which I'll come back onto, and you're gonna deal out some money. Because lovely, they're called dollar bills, or one million dollar bills, with a little uh, sleeve on it here. So you're gonna take this money out, and you're gonna divide up equally. Now I'm just gonna show it for a four player game. Now there's 63 million, so I'm just gonna chuck three back in the box, so it's easy to deal out, and you're dealing 15 million out each. I won't waste time just doing that. Let's do it roughly, it doesn't make too much of a difference. So as you can tell, we have a finite amount of money each, and that could go to different players. It could go to that climate fund as well. We're gonna chuck away everything else we don't need. So we have different animals. We have got a, like a capuchin monkey or something. I've got a brown bear or something like that, maybe a grizzly. We have a type of tortoise here. We've got a penguin and we have an elephant. And what you're gonna be doing is chucking them out onto here. And also, as it won't fit in the box otherwise, I'm gonna slide in this little microphone. And as you can see, it's very, very effective, very, very 3D. And now here you are, you can see I'm trying to give a talk. So there we go, let's leave that in shot for time being. So you can grab your animals and stick them wherever you want. I think a brown bear can go there, elephants, let's, it's African elephant, let's stick in Africa. We're gonna stick a penguin down in Antarctica, we're gonna have a tortoise down in South America, capuchin monkey, or oh, let's just stick it in Europe, maybe escaped or something. You're also gonna have these little climate uh, areas as well. And what you're gonna be doing is you're going to be taking all of them, all on the blue side initially, and then you're going to be removing one of them. Now, some of them have got something on the back and what they're doing basically is an, is an effect, which we'll come back onto. So you're gonna have various objectives. You're gonna have three, you're gonna pick two of them and keep them. And what you're gonna do is you're looking to try and achieve your goal to get more points and beat your opponents. It's a competitive game. It takes about half an hour to play roughly. The teach itself, to be honest, I think is almost longer than the game, or in fact, probably longer than the game when you first play. And you're gonna flip this one over. And right now, it's something that's out of play. So right now we know that if we haven't increased the temperature, something that won't occur is basically an animal to be flipped. And that might be a negative thing. So flipping an animal basically makes it go extinct, which might be an objective for you. 
Let's chuck that uh, just off to the side so people know we have some uh, information. You're gonna have some clouds and similar again to those animals, it's the same principle. You're gonna mix them up and turn one over. And right now we now know that if ever we flipped over a cloud, we might well get some, uh, obviously some temperature increasing. And now you're gonna chuck these clouds around the outside edges without looking. And the outside edge is always your scoreboard. I personally don't bother, I just get a little app that I use to do it instead. I use BG Stats amongst other things. And representing who you are, you're gonna take your respective country. Like I said, I was Australia before, let's take Australia again. Australia again, and we've got obviously the rest of them in play. And to be honest, these could probably go back in the bag as well, or the box, they're not essential. So we need to pay who, who wants to start. So we have a speaker duty, that is gonna be next to that person. And this card, you don't really need, but what this represents is basically the various cards that could be in play. So I'll come back to that in due course. Let's just move some of these out of shot. Okay, so you're gonna take these cards. These represent your sort of uh, cards representing objectives. You've basically gone to this massive Kyoto protocol, you know, event, and you're gonna again shuffle these up and deal three to each player. So one, two, three, and let's just say I've got those. Let's not look at the others. And we're looking at these cards and there is a theme. The theme is just on the left. So let's just go through them as an example. Don't forget, don't forget the, inter uh, the interests of the agricultural lobby in mind. Your government has always benefited from our cooperation. That's all we're saying. And here we go. You're trying to get agriculture to do well. At the end of the game, you're going to gain five points and uh, one point will be lost for each um, agricultural card in this in the affluence area, which I'll call, talk to you about in a moment. You can gain two points if global warming is the most advanced damage on the board. So I'm trying to get this up, okay? I do not want the other things to be going up more than this. If I do that, I'm gonna gain two points. This one, don't forget the uh, interest of the coal mining industry in, in mind. Your government has always benefited from our cooperation, that's all we're saying. So this time, gain one point for each cloud on the board that is black side face up. And if there are at least four, I'm gonna gain two additional points. This one is a farmer industry. Don't forget to keep the interests of the farmer industry in mind, blah, blah, blah. Okay, end of the game, gain two points every three impacts of the curl on the board. Okay, and somebody happened to have this uh, on Sunday. So there we go, gonna keep two of them. Now something else you're gonna have is a deck of these uh, cards, these affluence cards I mentioned, affluence cards. And if you're playing a three or five player game, you're gonna remove certain cards. Now I'll talk about this now. I love the art on the cards, I really like it. In particular, all of them have money hidden somewhere on them. And now, of course, I would talk to you in the review about this, but in case I forget, I just wanna tell you how, how fun I've enjoyed finding where the money is. So you can deal out these cards. So again, it's 48 cards in a four player game, you're having 12 each. So let's just grab 12, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Again, the rest will be dealt out normally. You're gonna look through your cards and what you're gonna be doing is they're gonna be some kind of agenda that you're trying to give to the board. I'll talk to you about that in a moment. And you're trying to see what you want to do with them. Now, the reason why I just want to get these cards in play now is you're choosing, remember, which of these three things to keep. So if we do it like that, you're trying to either get clouds involved, you're trying to reduce agriculture, so you don't want to spend agriculture, or you're trying to um, uh, flip clouds as well. So the only thing you can really focus on is uh, this one, perhaps. So we're looking through these cards. There are various things. You're trying to make things go extinct. You're trying to help the chemical industry, you're trying to help the nuclear industry, you're trying to increase temperature, the steel industry, there's agriculture, I'll come back to that. Obviously uh, air pollution, the, the clouds, more agriculture, um, heating, more nuclear, nuclear and steel. So if I happen to be chucking in these cards, then that is making me lose points. I don't mind, I'm happy to keep those cards, but for now I'm going to choose to discard this card, not worry about it and have free reign to use these cards I see fit. Remember, you're chucking one away in the box, and once everyone has done that, you're moving on to the next thing. So now we're moving on to the speaker phase. So now uh, you're thinking about the first agenda. There's 24 cards, equal amount of turns. So in a four player game, you're gonna be going through two cards, picking one and chucking the other one in the box. Now, when it's their turn or somebody else's turn, of course, they're gonna go through two as well, until, as you can imagine, if you do your division, then once you've gone around the table three times, that's 24 cards, because you've picked two, there's four players, and there's three rounds. Okay, so these are the two things I could try to do. I could try and reduce CO2 emissions by 150 tonnes, and I'll talk to you about it in a moment. You're basically chucking in cards that meet that, and you're doing it collectively. So I could chuck in 100 tonnes, someone chucks in something else. Now, I need to chuck in three funding as well, three million. So of course, I've got my money here, my chunk of money, and I can use that as well, as can everyone else. If we don't do this, there's gonna be some damage. 
And basically what's gonna happen is one of these is gonna flip over. Now looking back to my things, these don't actually impact me. So I don't care if these uh, get damaged, to be honest, but it might help somebody else. Now, the second thing I could choose to do or be aware of is um, everybody's gonna see this. So if I happen to pick this card, you put it in very carefully and you can see, you can't see that actually there's extra damage. Everyone's gonna see this. They're gonna see what we need to achieve. But what they're not gonna see is also what's gonna happen is there's gonna be more damage. There's another extinction happening. So let's look at the other card. And this one, and that's called a study on the contribution of the food industry to greenhouse gas emissions. By the way, this was created by, um, I don't know about diplomats, but basically they're massive fans of, um, of the environment. So they have PhDs. Um, and one's recently moved to Northern Europe where they write critical essays on, on social justice and stuff. So this other one is called Study on the Reduction of Biodiversity. Now equally is affecting animals. And uh, what you need to try and do is chuck in two cards, which uh, obviously help exterminate animals. Let's say burgers, now directly not killing where you are killing cows, say, but equally you might well having to raise the land such as in a, you, you know Amazon rainforest, which isn't good. So that's reducing biodiversity, as you can imagine. So if you can't chuck in two cards and you don't chuck in five million, then this is occurring, so more damage. So I've got to pick one of them. Well, neither of them benefit me, so I'm gonna go with the least of the two, perhaps, three million. I'm gonna chuck that in. Again, the others wouldn't have seen the bottom part. Then I chuck the other card away so they won't see uh, what that's about. And now we have 90 second timer. You can use your phone. There's no uh, sand timer included which to be honest is a good thing because everyone who looks at sound timer, I've seen them get stuck. I know if you flip them over, they're always out by about 10%. And at least an alarm clock on your phone, you're gonna have it go off. You can hear it and you don't have to keep watching the sound timer. Whenever we've played it, we've resolved stuff in about half a minute. So we're now gonna start the clock. And what we're gonna be doing is I'm gonna start reading these things out. So firstly, I'm gonna take 2 million from the bank. Now remember, in a four player game, everyone took $15 million. So I'm gonna take $2 million and there's $1 million left. Okay, so I'm taking 2 million, adding that to my stack. So I've got 17 compared to their 15. I then do the next step. So I've drawn the two study cards, as I mentioned. I've picked the one I wanna keep. We then did the contribution phase. So I said the 90 seconds timer, and now we've gotta try and do it. So I'm gonna say, well, I can do this. Now remember, I do not want animals to increase because I want it to ensure that the, the clouds have actually increased more than anything else potentially. Two points for every three impacts. In fact, I don't mind if these in impact either. So maybe I actually put five million in to deter them. But I'll say, do you know what, guys? I'll chuck in a million. You know, I've just taken two minutes. I'll chuck in a million. And the others look at their objective and think like, well, I do want this to occur. Well, they don't. So some people will be saying, I'm not helping. Others will be saying they're helping. If you do enough, nothing happens. The card's discarded, and that's the end of that uh, the round, at the end of the first of the 12 rounds in a four-player game. Otherwise, we're gonna have damage. So let's say we have some damage. So we have, uh, yeah, brown bear's gone extinct. And let's say the tortoise has gone extinct. That's happened. You know, I don't think these cards come back. But otherwise, you'd have been chucking cards. And here we go, all these things are all things which are bad for the environment. Super tankers, vintage cards, games, consoles, butter, fireworks, night skiing, smartphones, ferroconcrete. So that's one of the 12 rounds. It's gonna go on again, and you're gonna do other things. But let's just quickly show you what would happen if uh, you happen to play out some cards. So let's go on, just do one more example, two more cards. Uh, we have studying the effect of air pollution and water quality on soil humidity. Uh, so we're increasing a cloud could happen and temperature increases. This one increases it twice. Well, let's say we go for, well, let's try that one. I'll show you an example, 100. So we're gonna be chucking in well, one card. If other people chucked in cards, so somebody chucked in those two and I chucked in this. Remember some of these cards, if you can recall, they actually have certain things. They are looking to have automotive. I have the automotive one. And again, uh, people do not want to have automotive going in. Now I didn't have any, but what you're trying to make sure of is if I'm the speaker, I'll say, uh, let's say someone did pick up an automotive card. So let's say they had one to hand. And we've got golf in here, cosmetics, obviously just temperature. And that's a tractor, but it doesn't class towards automotive. Formula One. So if somebody chucked in that, now I'm the speaker and I've got the automotive one. I do not want automotive being contributing because I don't want to make out as if we've given up Formula One. I'm going to say, well, I'm going to pick these two cards or that one. Okay. So now that goes back to the person's hand. And um, what's going to happen is that isn't in the game anymore. So it's discarded. And that's what these flags are for. You're going to cover it over. 
And again, um, that's now being added. Now, if you happen to get more cards in this zone, you're just gonna sort them out based on the type. So oil, so we have cruise liners, plastic bags. If you happen to get, uh, as we talked about chemical, if you happen to get something else, any steel as I talked about, that can go there as well. Now, at the end of the game, you're then gonna do some scoring. That's where this comes in handy. So you'll score one point per affluence point, are basically included under all of your flags. Anything that you've tried to contribute, you're getting a point, and anything else in your hand, any cards you had remaining. So I had nine cards last time. That's nine points plus whatever I tried to add. That's 10 points, because I tried to do something. You're then gonna get points from your agenda cards. So if I go through this one that I just had a moment ago, please bear in mind, of course, we just started a couple of turns. Two points every three impacts. Well, there's none there because I haven't done at least three. And gain one point for each cloud on the board that is black side up. I'm not getting any points there. So as you can see, you're getting at points here. And normally this is where you're getting the most points. So obviously one turn in the game, not much has really occurred. Uh, the final thing we're getting at points is on money. So whoever has the most money at the end of the game, they're getting at four points and in a tie, you're still getting four. Any country with the second most money get two points and anybody in third position gets one point. So that is Kyoto. I think it's a fascinating game involving obviously the environment, most importantly. But also, is I, I love bidding games, I love negotiation games, the set amount of money you have each. You know, I have played other games of a, of a different theme, but a sort of a similar idea, such as Panic on Wall Street, and I happen to do like, well in that instance, uh, well at that game. I came second in this game and I happened to try it out the last time I played it. Um, I like the idea of the cards, obviously lots of things to bear in mind. Just something to be aware of though, of course, is probably going through and explain to everybody the kind of things that could occur, the kind of, the damage makes sense, it's all kind of the same thing but it's where these cards, the kind of objectives that you're trying to achieve, they change things quite a bit. The person who won kept moaning that they were chucking a lot of money, but their secret objective was actually to take half of all the money that went back into that environmental fund. So any money that you're chucking in to try and meet an objective, like five million, goes back to the central reserve. As long as that's there as well, at the end of your turn, sorry, when it's your turn to be the speaker, you're drawing and taking $2 million as well. So yeah, I found I give this game a high seven. I think, you know, pretty much an eight out of 10 because I, I love the idea of obviously negotiation, the bidding. Uh, naturally, those kind of games, you do need, uh, as you can imagine, three players. Otherwise it's just, well, I'm gonna be contributing or you're not, or you are. And it just comes down to luck, perhaps, based on the kind of cards that you're dealing with. Um, but I like the idea, obviously the flavor text. Now, of course, on the uh, some of these cards, it's especially on these objective cards, it does take up half the thing, and of course they're quite repetitive as you saw. We could be gaining five points, one per chemical lobby. I think it's very educational. I think it's very, very interesting. Of course, I created this box and you're basically chucking all your cards back in there as well. So you're chucking your 48 cards, you're chucking in all of your other things too. Nicely laid out, you know, nice uh, sketchbooks and things like this and clipboards and things like that. The nice use of this and the hidden stuff. I think it's very nice. Um, yeah, very nice thing. It's a nice small box as well. I don't know if that was their intention. There was no plastic inside the box either, which might be why they didn't choose to do that. Of course, it wasn't shrink if you saw the other video, but apart from that, I think it's fine. Of course, again, this card, you know, you can just choose to say where you have cards, but you're kind of playing, as with most games, in either table or like an oblong, so it doesn't make too much sense that you need to bother with that. Uh, everything does fit away nicely though, as mentioned, and aside from that, you could well stick all these counters in here. So that's been Kyoto. Again, Kyoto's protocol. I think based on the current world events, I think uh, I found it very interesting. Again, uh, it's just because under current climatal examples, i.e., you know, COVID-19 and stuff, playing as a three, as a minimum, these in this day and age has been obviously less uh, of a common occurrence than recently. But for a game that isn't too long, of course, you just need to be aware of how to play it. It's quite an interesting one. So if we happen to flip over this, that's all that happened, it got a bit warmer, and then we flip over a cloud, and then warmer again, etc. wherever that was gonna be. So these all fit in nice in here, nice little small map of the world, and it is double-sided. So you could choose to be in Africa, or you could choose to be obviously in the Pacific and the Americas and stuff. So rather nice, a nice kind of cute animals. Um, yeah, Austrian designers, and I think they've uh, done a nice job on this. And yeah, I don't know if they've made much else to be honest, but yeah, very much enjoyable game and I very much look forward to playing it again. And yeah, please let me know what you think. Uh, is this the kind of thing for you? There are other games I have, which is I'll buy Pegasus Spieler in this size. And um, as you might know, I quite like Pegasus Spieler games a lot, mostly because they're not too big. 
and um, this does actually fit um, in, a, in a, it's gonna go into the playlist. So if you wanna see other videos by Pekka Spieler, deep print games, I haven't heard of them before. I don't know if that's got anything to do with the actual uh, designers. We're gonna chuck everything back in the box. Well, again, any questions, please ask. Again, it's a bit of a teach, but once you're up and running, it's fairly straightforward. Any questions, bye for now.